So I'm out here at a beautiful facility that has a bunch of crocodiles and I want to just go through it and tour the place to see how different places and different people keep these animals successfully in captivity. So let's have a look. So over here in this enclosure we have a beautiful bunch of Nile crocodiles and the first thing I notice is the land area. There is so much space for these guys to roam around. In fact their nesting area is right up there which is a fair distance away from their little watering hole. They also have a forest section where they can go and hide out and I can see when you go to the top corner of the enclosure that they actually tend to use this which is interesting because in captivity we don't tend to provide enough land area for these animals to roam around because they actually will roam quite a fair distance in the wild. It was actually recorded, re recorded recently that nesting females were nesting up to 400 meters away from the banks of the water system that they abide in. If we scan along the banks of this enclosure you'll see a bunch of different crocodiles but right over here I reckon that's the boy. I'm 100% certain. I mean, look at the size difference compared to those females. And those females next to him, those aren't small crocodiles. But he's a large boy. So this over here is the exact same enclosure I was showing you earlier with a couple of crocodiles in it. And look here, you can see all the way up into the banks here of this like forest system in the enclosure. The crocodiles actually roam over here. I can see the tracks of them. And in fact, in the middle there is where I can see a female was nesting. You can kind of see the mound in the middle of this like subtropical forest in the enclosure itself. Another thing that I just spotted now, which is really important. I mean, this is the exact same enclosure, only a few crocodiles in there. And wow, there is amazing amounts of space in it. But there is a second pond which is vitally important when you're keeping especially a bunch of crocodiles together because they need that visual barrier if they start fighting or whatever they want to find a different space to just chill out. So that second little pond even though it's very small is pretty important and a vital part of keeping these animals thriving in captivity. I mean, I can see the tracks here of the crocodiles walking all the way over here, which is a fair distance away from their little watering hole. Ooh, it's incredibly bright over here. Let's take a walk across this enclosure over here just to see how much space it actually has. So there in the center, we have the watering hole with a bunch of crocodiles. There is a fat, fat chubby girl right over here. She is really large. She's a beautiful animal though, but look, it continues, it continues. There's this nice like boardwalk that we can view these animals across and there's that chubby little girl over there. I shouldn't say little but here we have a forest system again in the enclosure itself and the path is used readily by these animals. I can't see that they're using so much of the middle of the enclosure but they are walking around the whole outer edges of the enclosure which is a fair sized I can see the tracks over here probably about 100 150 meters away from the initial pond over there and there is in fact another pond in this enclosure too so all the way around this is still the same enclosure that we started off with and it's spanning a large area of land which I can see these crocodiles use well the edges of this I can't see so much into the bush but they're walking all the way around which is incredible. We're still going and they still walk around here and here I see the second pond in this enclosure system too. That's awesome. Awesome to see different ponds just so they can get away from each other and chill out if they need to. And there we go we have the second pond here and then the main pond over there so they can just chill and get away from each other if need be. In this enclosure here, we also have a bunch of our Nile crocodiles, some fairly large individuals. There was in fact a huge one here measuring over 5.2 meters. Incredible size of a crocodile, especially a Nile crocodile. They get huge. So another thing I notice here is each crocodile seems to have its own space where it likes to bask on the land. As you can see there, 
wherever they bask it's like on sand and not on the grass in fact because they've probably trampled all the grass away and you see that female in the middle she probably has that spot and then this one has that spot I think that might be the male but it might be just a large female also and you can see they can also go up into the corners there and bask another important factor is these enclosures are not overcrowded with animals I only see four so I reckon there's probably four or six animals in this enclosure and it's large I mean the space goes on for days and days and days and they seem to use all of it which is incredible definitely an interesting little setup for some of the baby crocs over here they have ample amounts of space which I love I would probably just have the outer edges of the pond all you know nice and soil and plant some stuff here's a bunch of little babies how cute are these little guys super super yellow too over here we have two animals that I absolutely adore these are two West African dwarf crocodiles with a nice size enclosure nice water pond but that male there on top he's the largest West African dwarf I have seen in my life he is absolutely huge so in this enclosure here we have a bunch more West African dwarf crocodiles but to me they might look like a bit more similar to Osteolamus osborni which is the cave crocodile or the Congo dwarf crocodile as you can see there she's got really yellow dots on her mouth and she's just super cute and a lot smaller you can see in the middle of the enclosure there there's that huge mound so also a nice little forest set up there's another one there so I count one two three four five in the water yeah five in this enclosure which is awesome for a species like this dwarf crocodiles are absolutely incredible and some of my favorite these guys are a lot smaller than the tetraspis I've worked with which are the West African dwarfs so I believe they might be similar to the Osborne and another one of my absolute favorites the West African slender snouted crocodile these guys are absolutely stunning and a fairly docile crocodilian species from what I've experienced working with them but absolutely incredible animals also an endangered species or a threatened species but hopefully we can change that with some captive breeding programs and work on their survival uh, they were actually listed as a critically endangered species by the IUCN their threats include habitat destruction, overfishing, and just general habitat disturbance as well as the bushmeat trade. Overfishing really affects these animals because they feed mainly on fish. That's why they have that really slender snout so they're able to chomp and get the fish in the water super quick, super fast. They are just the perfect predator. They also feed on crustaceans. Even some aquatic snakes have been recorded to be eaten by these guys. So basically they eat pretty much everything but they really enjoy their fish so overfishing has a huge impact on their population i'm actually busy working on securing a pair of these animals so we can breed them and hopefully become a part of a breeding program and a reintroduction program for this critically endangered species so that's that's the goal that's the dream and if you want to help that out follow me on patreon you can help support there and i'll keep you up to date with what's going on with this critical critically endangered species but aren't they stunning so this female behind me was a rescued wild Nile crocodile as you can see there she has that like scar on her midriff what happened was she was caught in a wire snare from like poachers and obviously rescued and she's living her life out here thriving it looks like and seems to be she has no issues whatsoever even though she has that scar in her midriff or midsection of her body and her scales and scoot seem to be a bit damaged but she seems to be happy a happy chappy and apparently the wire snare even cut through her vertebra but she is still doing well here so that's why she just needed some extra little care and a bit of help living her life out now in captivity sad that that had to happen and poachers did that but she seems to be okay now behind me here we have 
two messy tops cataphractus, the West African slender snouted crocodile. They're basking in the sun there, getting their temperature nice and warm and raising their heat up. These guys are ectotherm, so that's why they need to raise their temperature. Well, ectotherm is a fancy word for being cold blooded. Yes, everybody knows what cold blooded is. Not a stone cold killer, but they are unable to regulate their own body temperature. This is an incredible species, but check at this. They have this large, large enclosure over here. I'm trying to not overexpose myself, but wow, this is a large, large forest enclosure, forest setup, and then they have their ponds over there. So a large amount of space is a really good thing for these animals because they will use it, even though they just basking right by the water's edge there because that's the safest spot if a predator per se were to come on them they can just make a dash into the water and escape and live their life out peacefully in their little waddling hole wow i nearly fell and tripped and died but i'm alive i didn't nearly die